are talking now about 13 Colbert House, where I first met you, uh, because the flat was then occupied. Yeah, it was occupied by Ismail, Ismail Mir, and Jay and Singh, and you were all law students together. And every now and then, after lectures, the three of you used to come to 13 Colbert House. Occasionally, you stayed over there. But you were at university and I was at school. But I already knew Ismail and JN. So that's how I met you in mm. uh, 1945. And since then I saw nothing else but trouble. Jail and jail and jail. Now, we are dealing with the first aspect. And that is, I don't know if you'll remember this meeting. This was a meeting on top of the roof of Hollywood House. <coughs> It was a meeting between the South African Indian Congress National Executive and the ANC. Mm. It was a joint meeting in the boardroom and flat 13 was used for refreshments. This was Yusuf Kachalia and D.U. Mystery, Joint Secretaries of the South African Indian Congress, Dan Klume, member of the African National Congress Executive, Gulam Pahad, member of the South African Indian Congress Executive, Oliver Tambo, a member of the Executive, but subsequently President of the African National Congress. Uh, Bupape. Yeah, he was a member of the National Executive of the ANC. Yes. Bupape, Secretary of the Transvaal. That's right. And Modi Kachalia of the Transvaal Indian Congress. Mm. Now, uh, then we come to this photograph. Uh, Bupape. Yeah, he was Secretary of the Transvaal. That's right. Uh, Malvi Kachalia, Secretary of the Transvaal Indian Congress. Then we come to this photograph, which is taken on the same day, but in order to date this meeting, because we don't know the, the exact date, you are not part of the group. I see. Neither is Dr. Dadu and Moses Kotani. My recollection is all three of you were banned uh, from attending gatherings. No, of course. So that would put this to 1953. Because you were banned first in 1953, Dadu and, uh, and, and Moses were also banned. Mm. And so you were not allowed to, get, uh, to attend gatherings. Yes, quite. That is why you are not part of the gathering, the yes. photograph. Mm. And uh, this photograph was then taken separately. Mm. on the roof, the same occasion. And then, of course, these two were also banned. So they could not be in a group photograph. That is Moses Kotani, a uh, member of the National Executive of the ANC, but also Secretary of the Communist Party. And Dr. Dadu, from the South African Indian Congress, and also Chairman of the Communist Party. Both impressive chaps. Yeah. Now, this is myself. At that time, I was occupying the flat. Ismail had already qualified as a lawyer, and he had left, Jayan had left, and uh, I was now occupying the flat. We were coming down in the lift, uh -huh. and a young lady of about nine or ten came in, and uh, you said, uh, oh, how are you, how is my sister? And this young lady says, you would be very proud if you had a sister like me. <laughs> <laughs> but those little children were very political. Yes, of course. Whenever they saw a white person coming into that building who was not known, any white person that the children did not recognize, they assumed must be a policeman. So as soon as that white person entered, waiting for the lift, these children would run up the fire escape and warn, Uncle, Uncle, police. <laughs> So they were very political. What we are coming to now is when we were on treason trial, the 30 of us, not the 156. Yes. From 1958 to, to 61, the 30 of us were on treason trial in Pretoria. And of course, uh, the legal firm of Mandela and Tambo was still functioning. But before that already, of course, you were frequenting the place every now and then after hours and the office was closed and so forth, you used to come and 
use the flat. But in 1960, after OR was sent abroad, OR Tambo was sent abroad by the ANC, and that is when the firm of Mandela and Tambo closed down, the office closed down. At that stage, you started practicing from the flat. Every day after treason trial and during adjournments, you used to uh, have your law practice from there. But I don't know if you'll remember, the first day that you occupied my place, your clients, of course, came. So the first day it was all right. <laughs> then as it went on, more and more clients came. They first occupied one room. We had three rooms there. That was full. Then, with the passage of time, another room got full, <laughs> waiting for you. And they were very demanding. So as they were concerned, uh, it's irrelevant that I was the occupant of the flat. They have come to see the lawyer. And the third room got full, <laughs> which left me with the kitchen. <laughs> anyway, but it was a, a good experience for all of us. And uh, then, of course, uh, uh, you carried on using the flat from 1960 till 1961 when we were now acquitted in the treason trial and soon thereafter uh, you went underground. So that ended your relationship with, with Colbert House. Mm. Unless you've got some other memories that... Uh, no, you remember one day there came a chap who was blind in one eye. Uh -huh. But you objected without a very forceful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had to look for another office because I, I don't know why you hated this chap so much. No, he was very rude. Very, very rude. He just dismissed me and very rude to me. <laughs> So I also, I must have reacted angrily also, if he was reacting, because there were so many of your clients that were coming there. Yes, right. Uh, who <laughs> is now using Colbert House? The flat is still in my name. I see. But you remember Amin Kaji? Yes. Who took you to Botswana when we smuggled you out when, yes, he, when he went to... I uh, remember him very well. When I was under house arrest and I couldn't get visitors, Amin was working somewhere else. So I called him back, I said, Please come here because I'm not allowed to have visitors. You must take responsibility for my visitors. So he took responsibility. And when I went underground, I left the flat to him. I see. So uh, we are still going into some sort of recognition. I'm told that uh, some representation has been made to Palo to declare it a heritage site. I see. That was good. Yeah. Well, those were interesting times. Yes. Uh, I hope uh, the records will be accurate because uh, it shows what other groups did for all of us. Yes, and your uh, close relationship with uh, Ismail Mir and Jay and Singh did help politically as well. Yes, uh, those days uh, to have uh, something with members of other race groups was very dangerous. Yes. Mm. What we did. Because you people being law students, a yes. lot of discussions, and at that time the Youth League was still not in favor of cooperation. And you may still remember a meeting, I wasn't there, but a meeting, a informal discussion rather. Uh, Ismail, JN, yourself, Oliver, and Walter, informally discussing there. And at that time, the Youth League's uh, attitude was non-cooperation with the other organizations. And then, uh, at that informal meeting, Walter broke ranks. And Walter said, no, there's a lot of merit in what these chaps are saying about cooperation. On your way to the station, that time there were no motor cars. Mm. You and Or were so angry with, with Walter, so Walter was walking on one side of the pavement and you people are on the, the other side. side. <laughs> That came from the flat mm. after discussions. But yeah. eventually, because one thing we have always stressed, although the Youth League uh, had this attitude, it was not a racist thing. It was more exclusivist. And you had your own reasons, but not racist. Yes. Because your close friends were these chaps. Yeah, of course. Yeah.